Welcome to Worship Tutorials. In this video, you're gonna learn how to play the song Always by Chris Tomlin on electric guitar. I'm not gonna teach how to play the song in this video. Our friend Jason Houtsma from Worship Artistry is going to teach the song and he is a fantastic teacher. They have a service over at Worship Artistry where they have a catalog of well over 500 songs and they teach how to play every song on just about every instrument that you would need. Guitar, both acoustic and electric, uh, keys, bass, drums, and vocals which uh, I've personally found very helpful as I've been doing a lot of harmony uh, vocals lately in church and I am uh, like a fish out of water. So I have used worship artistry to figure out how, where the harmony parts are uh, on many occasions. Jason, again, is a good friend, a fantastic teacher, and uh, he's gonna teach you how to play this song. The song Always by Chris Tomlin is a really, it's a very percussive song. Um, there's a lot of guitars in it. Very typical of a Chris Tomlin song, a lot of instruments all kind of creating this wall of sound, but we've been able to break out kind of individual parts and I think they really fit well with the song. If you have a second electric guitar player, just letting them play kind of heavy chords underneath what you're doing here will work fine and really fill out the sound, but this will get you by as well. The song's in the key of C, it's not capoed or anything, so go ahead and tune up and let's get started. We start off with this opening riff, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, we're gonna turn off the effect here so we can really hear what's happening here. And essentially, you're up, your pointer finger is up on the eighth fret of the B, and your pinky, and you're, and you're actually barring your E and your B string. You wanna make sure that stays barred because you're gonna pull off to get down there. So your pinky's gonna come up on your 12th fret, and we're just gonna go one and two and three and four and. So remember, when you're doing 16th notes, when you look at the tabs down below, we're counting ands because we're in 6-8 time. So once again, one and two and three. So on the and, we pluck that high E string. Then we plug down and pull off to the 10th fret with our to our ring finger. And catch on the up strum again. And then we do the same rhythm. So we just pluck, pull off to that bar, catch the up strum again, and finish. And with rhythmic riffs like this, I like to actually just kind of keep my hand moving like at this drum pattern, because it kind of helps you like stay in, like locked in with the song. So it's down, up, down, and pull off. Remember, come back up again when you pull off. Up. So you get down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. That'll help you really lock in that feel. This verse is very simple. We're just kind of splitting the measure with a one, two, three, four, five, six. For the first part, and then we add a little bit more. So we're in the same spot. Now our first two measures, you'll notice on the tabs, are, are blank. We're just resting there because we've just finished our riff. Right? So we're just starting pointer finger on the fifth of the G and we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, two, two, three, four, five, six, again. Three, four, five, six, three, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, That's the first half. Then we start adding more of a dotted feel where we're gonna bar, and you can, if you want, you can do it this way too. It's kind of up to you. Um, you're barring your E and your B string with your pointer finger on the fifth fret of the G, and you're going. So see that dotted feel, that one, two, and three, and four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. five, six, then you're gonna change your chord. You're gonna still hold that pointer finger in place, but you just kind of drop this note back. So your ring finger is on the seventh of the E, pinky on the eighth of the B. Same thing, and then right back to your original one. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
first chorus is kind of interesting. We're bringing in a little bit of a riff while at the same time playing a rhythmic element as well. It's going to sound like this. So you'll notice there's a little bit of partial palm muting going on there. Uh, if you haven't taken the 101 lesson on the partial palm muting, be sure to check that out. You just look at muting and then it covers all the stuff. But in the meantime, uh, what we're doing here is pull up your tabs. We're basically going on the five and six is where we're making our change. So we're going down, down, up, up, down, down, and then hammering. So one, two, and three, and four. So the main pattern is always this up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. That's the vibe, and then we're adding in that extra note. So once again, just that first one, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. But when the up, we're not actually hitting. bass now and play the same thing just opening up the a f is a little bit tricky because we're dropping back to an f5 they have to come up for that rip so same uh, rhythmic pattern but we're hammering from our third of the d So let's just do that whole section because the next one's about to change. So going from your C. That's the main part. And then we're going to change it up a little bit on the C and the G over B. So we're going down, 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 up, down. Hammering though. So down, down, hammer, pluck. So one, two, three, and four. And then just down to that second fret of your A. Same idea, we're gonna hammer on the, the D. thing. So that section one more time. Down, down, hammer, on, down, up, up. Down, down, hammer, on, down, up, up. And then we just repeat the whole thing. And then we're going to repeat the whole thing nice and slow. So all together it's going to sound like this. Verse two is a nice little lift. It's going to sound like this. It's the main idea. It's just going to repeat through that and then do a one little riff at the end, but we'll just hit that part first. So what's happening there is our pointer finger is on the fifth fret of the G and our pinky is going to be barring our E and our B string. And we're going to palm mute. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Once again, one, two, three, Nice and big bright hit. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that move, this middle finger jumps up to your seventh of your E ring on the eighth of the B, and you're gonna go. So you're hitting the two together, put your pinky on the E, and then hit the B string. One, two, three. 
drop out. So you jump up with your ring finger up to the 10th fret. One, two, and then you roll to the eighth of the B. And then just slide out and hold for that next, uh, for those next three beats. So all together, that whole verse is gonna go. take you into the next chorus. For this next chorus, we kick on our overdrive and we have this repeating riff that's gonna sound like this. And we do that twice. I'm gonna turn off the effects so we can hear what's going on here. I'm turn off that reverb so we can really hear it. Now, the trick with this one is all about the rhythm. The main moves are just going. So let's look at those notes first. We're just pinkies on the eighth of the B, pointer on the fifth of the G, and we're going. Then we bring our middle finger on the B, second measure we hammer so you put your middle finger on the eight six of the B and then hammer with your pinky onto the eighth bar that E string and come back to the B so once again those are the notes now the trick is the actual rhythm to really get the feel for it it's kind of more of a strum pattern it's like a so you want to kind of get a little bit of down, up, down, up, up, that kind of a feel. So we're on that fifth fret of the G, pinky's on the B, and we're just going to do more of a strum pattern. So it's going to go down, mute, up. So you're lifting up pressure so that when you strum down again, you're only hitting uh, muted strings. So down, mute, up. Okay, once again, down, mute, up, down, mute, up. Then we're gonna do the same thing, but it's gonna go backwards. We're gonna go down, mute, up, up, down. So down, mute, up, mute, down. See that? And then you just work your way down. Just all straight down. So So get that groove going. You can see it in the tabs uh, as well as the loop. And then the second one, you're doing the same rhythm. So same rhythm, but you're hammering. finish out those. So again. And then we put those two together. So nice and slow. Make sense? And you do it three times. ring finger on the seventh of the G, pinky on the eighth of the B. So that's gonna be your chorus rip. You're gonna use that on the second chorus. You're also gonna use it on the last chorus, but then we're gonna add something. There's gonna be more of a lift there as well. Bridge is a piece of cake. It's gonna sound like this. I 
it's a little tricky as that hammer on, but let's build up to that. So we're gonna start out, pointer fingers on the fifth fret of the G, ring finger on the seventh of the D, and we're just one, two, three, four, five, six. Slide up two frets. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you're gonna bar on the G and the B on the fifth fret. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then your middle finger on the sixth fret of the B while your pointer finger stays. Pointer finger is going to be barring the top three. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to make our little D triad shape. Middle finger is on the seventh of the E, ring on the B, pointer on the seventh of that G. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we're going to bar the E and the B on the eighth fret. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So on that five beat, we just put our ring finger on the tenth of the E and then lift it up again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna finish out with three measures of this move. So what's happening is you're, you keep that bar, you're gonna go one and two, three. So you're hammering, you're leaving that bar, you're hammering just on the B. One and two, three, four and five, six. drop out for the break. So one more time, that whole bridge is gonna go. So you do that on the first bridge, and on the second bridge, you do the same exact thing. The only difference, it just ends on the E and the B. So it's and that's the end. So both bridges are essentially identical. Now our final chorus, we do the first, we kind of do the first part normal, and then we do a lift halfway through. So everything's the same initially, it's just... instead of just holding down those two, we're gonna come up and make a D chord shape up here on the seventh fret. So, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna keep the same pattern, but we're going to be doing it on different notes. So it's gonna go. turn the effects off so we can really hear what's going on. And we're doing the same pattern that we did in the earlier uh, chorus. So it's just down, mute, up, up, down. So it's that same. But then we're gonna just put our ring finger on the 10th fret of the E. Then we drop down, so our pointer finger is on the seventh of the E, middle finger on the eighth of the B, and we're gonna go four, five, six, so. takes us into the last bridge. But that's it for this song. There's kind of a lot of parts, kind of a lot of detail, but really it's all about just locking in that rhythm. If your rhythm is good, if you're able to kind of just lock in with the drums, you'll be in great shape.
Thanks again uh, for watching. Hey, subscribe to the channel here on Worship Tutorials if you haven't already. Also subscribe to Worship Artistry. They have a YouTube channel. And if you're interested in more lessons from Jason and the team over at Worship Artistry, again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of songs. They're adding new ones all the time and they'll teach you how to play all the parts. Uh, so it's a great option for, if you're a worship leader, it's a great option for um, your worship team. You can have team packages where everyone on your team can have access to the site, full access to everything. They have chord charts and uh, music over there. Um, everything you need just to have your whole band uh, execute these songs with a really high level of excellence. Thank you again, Jason. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.